Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I want us to look at as a, a encouragement this morning as we go into worship. Hebrews 12, verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Can we do that this morning? Every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. So things that are getting in the way of us worshiping God, let's lay them aside. In view of all those heroes of the faith in Hebrews chapter 11 who went before us, that's the cloud of witnesses. They're cheering us on. Amen. Run this race to the finish line. And let us uh, run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus. Isn't that what we want to do this morning? I just want to come and look unto Jesus one more time. Amen. You'll never be disappointed looking unto Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, a place of authority that benefits you and it benefits me. Amen. His authority works on our behalf when we look unto Jesus. And so let's do that today as we open this service in prayer. Let's look unto Jesus. And uh, let's prepare our hearts to worship Him this morning. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You, God, today for Your goodness. We thank You that You are the author and the finisher, the perfecter of our faith. Lord, that's why we've gathered today for no other reason but to lift You up, to look unto Jesus, and to become a little bit more like You, Jesus, today. We pray that Your Holy Spirit would have His way in the service this morning. God, that each one of us could receive something, God, that will help us in our walk with you today. And Lord, that you just accomplish what you desire to by your Holy Spirit. We'll be quick to give you the glory and the praise for all that's accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.
our strength. Sometimes you just don't feel like it, but you praise Him. Amen? You express that joy that's deep down on the inside. If for nothing else, He saved you. Amen? He's forgiven you. You may need a touch in your body. And by faith this morning, you have to say, victory is mine. Healing is mine. But you begin to utter that praise, and it frustrates the enemy. Amen? And God will give you joy uh, that will be your strength. Amen? And you'll begin to see the Lord touch you. So reach out and worship Him this morning. Praise the Lord. display of love this world has ever seen. And God, you loved us enough not to leave us in our sins, but to rescue us, to give us life and life more abundantly. There, there's none like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus.
We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's the
Can you lift your hands and just worship him this morning for who he is, amen, for what he's done? Hallelujah. The enemy likes to enlarge our problems, doesn't he, in our minds, magnify our problems. And we can reverse that by magnifying Jesus, amen. He's awesome. He's bigger than any problem you walked into this room with this morning. If you need healing, if you'll just look unto Jesus, amen. He's awesome. He can bring healing. If you need provision, he is still Jehovah Jireh. It doesn't matter what the enemy's been whispering in your ear all week. God is awesome, amen. He's faithful. He will do what's necessary if you look to him in faith. Hallelujah. You need peace. You need wisdom. Look to Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we worship you this morning. We thank you that you have made provision for everything that we need for life and godliness. Forgive us for those times when we listen too much to that whispering of the enemy. We let doubts, we let fears overtake us. God, let us see how awesome you are this morning. As we look unto Jesus, let us see how limitless, how mighty, how all-powerful you are. God, let our problems just fade away. God, as we see the light of your glory, as we see you in the beauty of your holiness, in the splendor of your majesty, God, I pray that we'll see our needs are met in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In your presence is everything that we have need of today. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord. We praise you. We give you glory. Hallelujah. If you have a need this morning, we're going to sing that uh, chorus one more time. And I just feel like the Lord wants us to lay those things at his feet. If you need a touch from the Lord, just lift your hands and surrender. The book of Timothy tells us we should lift holy hands to the Lord. They're holy because God made them holy. And you're reaching out in help to God. If you need healing, if you need a, a financial provision in your life, if you need deliverance from something that's been holding you captive for far too long, if you need wisdom or peace of mind, as we sing this chorus again, when you just look unto Jesus, reach out to Him, Give him that need, amen, and let him work, because I believe he wants to do something in our hearts this morning. Let's start with verse 2 of that song, and then we'll go into the chorus. Testimonies 
of healing, God, that would take place in this service this morning. We pray for testimonies of supernatural provision. God, that you'll make a way where there seems to be no way in providing resources and finances and help for those that need your provision today. We pray for testimonies of wisdom from above being granted for decisions that people didn't know what to do, but Lord, you gave them wisdom for those situations. Lord, we're praying for a peace that passes understanding in the midst of life storms, in the midst of chaos and confusion, circumstances that we cannot control. Lord, we pray for a peace that passes understanding from Jesus, the Prince of Peace, this morning. Touch your people today. Touch those who are watching over Facebook Live. Meet them right where they are, God, and bring an answer to their prayers. Bring a breakthrough for what they're believing you for this morning. We give you praise. We give you thanks in advance for what you're going to do. We give you the remainder of this service. Have your way. Teach us and draw us closer to you this morning, we pray. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. I want to share a message this morning entitled, Who is the Lord to You? 2 Samuel chapter 22 is what we're going to look at this morning. So if you want to turn there in your Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 22, and we're going to look at verses 29 through 35. 2 Samuel 22 and verses 29 through 35. Who is the Lord to you? You know, David had faced the bear, the lion, the giant Goliath, and he had dodged the spears of self-righteous Saul. You remember the stories. He had hidden in caves. Through every ounce of adversity, though, in David's life, David never lost sight of who the Lord is. Amen? What a lesson for us. The passage that we're going to look at this morning is an, ep an excerpt from a song of deliverance that David sang, 2 Samuel 22. And we need to remember who the Lord is in the midst of our situations and our circumstances today. Amen? It's easy to forget. It's easy to hear the clamoring of the enemy and the noise of this world and not hear the still small voice of the Lord. Amen? And God wants to teach us some things today, I believe, from this passage, who is the Lord to you today? Who is the Lord to you? 2 Samuel 22, starting with verse 29. For you are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord shall enlighten my darkness, for by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in Him. For who is God except the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power, and He makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer, and sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war, so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. So I want us to look at this passage, these few verses this morning. Who is the Lord to you? We can see from the psalmist David's uh, writings here, though he went through adversity and difficult times and uh, times of despair, he never forgot who the Lord is. And so we're going to look at that this morning. Number one, David says, the Word of God says, you are my lamp. You are my lamp. You know what? I can't see where I'm going in life, neither can you, unless Jesus, the light of the world, lights my way. Amen? Have you found that to be true? This world is full of darkness and evil and wickedness, and it's only increasing at will until Jesus comes back. The only way we're going to be able to traverse this path that God has called us to walk on this side of the grave is for Jesus, the light of the world, to constantly illuminate our footsteps. Amen? For us to never forget, no matter what we're facing, no matter what circumstances are overwhelming us, God, you are my lamp. Amen? You are my light. The Lord will enlighten our darkness. Jesus becoming flesh, living among us, dying on that cruel cross of Calvary and being raised the third day made it possible for the darkness of sin to be dispelled. Aren't you thankful this morning? You don't have to have the darkness of sin being your master, controlling and dominating your life. Jesus broke that at Calvary. And for the prophecy of Isaiah to be fulfilled in Matthew chapter 4, verse 16, it says, The people who sat in darkness have seen what? A great light. Who was that great light? Jesus, the light of the world. The people who have sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. We need to pray that for America. Amen? Though we have increasing darkness, wickedness, I can't tell you how my heart aches as we were singing that song, Dry Bones Come Alive, thinking about all the people that I know close to me, families that we youth pastored or pastored and their kids are away from God. And they know better. They've had the truth sown into their hearts. Homosexuality and transgenderism is on the rise. And it's demonic, folks. It's not just, a, a, it is a lifestyle choice, but it's not just some flippant thing. The devil is behind this perversion. And it's on the rise. People who have been raised to know better, that have the word of God sown in their hearts, and their kids are being caught up in this demonic stuff. And what it's going to take is a deliverance. 
They're going to have to be delivered because of any, just as much as someone who's addicted to drugs or addicted to some other uh, bondage in their life, this homosexuality and transgenderism and just the lostness of our sons and daughters, people that we love, it ought to wake us up to say, Jesus, we need your light. Amen? We need your light. We need the truth. These things are never going to satisfy. They're never going to fill that longing in our heart. It's going to have to be Jesus. So we ought to pray that for our nation. How does the Lord illuminate our pathway in life? He led by example. Aren't you glad? We serve a master who doesn't ask anything of us that he hasn't already done or is doing. Amen? How many would like to work for a boss like that? That would be a great job, right? If everything they're asking of you, they've either already done it or they're currently doing it. That's Jesus to us, though. Everything he's asked of us, he gave us a perfect example when he became flesh and he walked among us. Amen? So all he's asking us to do is to follow in his footsteps, to do what he did. He led by example, doing the Father's will by the help of the Holy Spirit. That's all Jesus did. He did the Father's will by the help of the Holy Spirit. What does he ask of you and me? He says, do the same thing. Do the will of the Father by the help of the Holy Spirit. We know we can because Christ modeled that example for us. How does the Lord illuminate our pathway in life? He gives us His Word, doesn't He? This Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119, 105. And it shows us the right way to walk if we'll listen to it. Amen? Not just have a head knowledge about it, but let it affect our heart. Then it can be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so we need to realize, like David did, Lord, you are my lamp. You are the light in my darkness. God, I want to look to you. I don't ever want to forget that you are my lamp. Number two, David said, by you I can run against a troop and leap over a wall. Maybe you're feeling today, I can't, do, I can't even hardly get out of bed, much less run against a troop and leap over a wall. We have days like that. And when our strength is exhausted and spent, His strength is perfect. Amen? Aren't you thankful? When you're at the end of your rope, I think there's a Facebook meme that says that. Make sure if you're at the end of your rope that it's the, the thread that's hanging off the hem of Jesus' garment. Amen? Like the woman with the issue of blood. When you get to the end of your rope, Jesus is still there. Amen? And He'll pick you up. And He'll carry you. He'll help you. But God, God wants us to remember in the midst of our circumstances what David said. By you, I can run against the truth and I can leap, leap over a wall. Christ followers are spiritual tough mudders. Have you ever seen those Spartan races or those tough mudder races? I run uh, 5Ks, 10Ks. I've even run a couple of marathons. But I tell you what, tough mudders is a whole other ball game with all the obstacles and difficult things that you have to do. But God's basically called us as believers in Jesus Christ to be spiritual tough mutters, if you will. No obstacle that Satan throws our way can prosper. Amen? Satan throws it in your path and intends for it to be a stumbling block. But if we're looking to Jesus, amen, trusting Him, not our own self-effort, He takes every stumbling block that Satan throws at us, and He throws a lot. Seven years as a church, we've seen a lot of stumbling blocks thrown at Finished Word Worship Center. Haven't we? But what has God done with every one of them? Financial, circumstances. God has made every stumbling block into a stepping stone. The next thing He has for our lives personally, the next thing He has for our lives as a church. And if we'll keep our eyes on Jesus, don't get fixed on the stumbling block. That's when you trip, right? You don't keep your eyes on the finish line. You don't keep your eyes on Jesus. You look down and you go, oh my goodness. What a big obstacle. What a big stumbling block. And our focus gets in the wrong place. That's when we get messed up. But when we keep looking to Jesus and we say, God, I'm just going to lift my leg up and trust that you're going to make this situation that I don't know how to fix a stepping stone. God does it for us. Amen. Time and time again. That's what David was talking about when he said, but by you, I can run against the truth. I can leap over a wall. No matter how great our opposition, our Lord is greater. Do you believe that this morning? No, may, no matter how much the devil lines up his weapons against you, and it doesn't say in the Bible in Isaiah 54, 17, that the devil will never line up his weapons against you, right? He will line up the weapons, but it says no weapon shall what? Prosper. 
You know, we ought to be able to say, because we're not looking at the weapons, we're not looking at the stumbling blocks, we're looking at Jesus, we ought to say, devil, you can bring as much as you want, I'm still not keeping, taking my eyes off the Lord. Amen? You can make all the noise you want with your weapons, but they're not going to prosper because Jesus is on my side. Amen? No obstacle that the enemy puts in our way is greater than the Lord. Amen? God is greater. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 17. Look at these verses with me. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes, Elisha's servant, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And in the physical, doesn't Satan like us in our five senses to sense all those weapons, all those obstacles that he's lining up against us to stop us from what we feel what God wants us to do? But if God would just, if, if he just opened our eyes to see in the spiritual, when our faith is in Jesus and his finished work, the forces of heaven that are on our side, amen? More are those who are for us than those who are against us. Remember that story about Elisha and his servant when you're going through your difficult time. When our faith is exclusively in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the Holy Spirit can fill us to overflowing, and through the Lord, we can run against the truth. Amen? Through the Lord, we can prevail. The Lord Jesus Christ shares His victory from Calvary with, with us each and every day, and He triumphed over all the powers of the enemy at Calvary. He canceled the written code, the law that we couldn't keep at Calvary. And so through Jesus and by the power of His Holy Spirit, we can run through a troop. We can leap over a wall. Even when in our own physical strength, we're like, Lord, I'm just struggling to take the next step. I'm just struggling to do my daily responsibilities. If we look to Jesus, He wants to help us. Number three, David said, He is a shield to all who trust in Him. Do we trust the Lord at all times? Or is the Lord just a crutch when the work of our hands fail? Something we all ought to ask ourselves. Self-analysis. We're always quick to say, oh wow, this would be a great message and we've got five people. Yeah, I, I, five people need to hear this message. You need to hear this message. I need to hear this message and I'm preaching it this morning. But this question, do we trust Him or is He just a crutch when the work of our own hands fail? Do we exhaust every other so-called avenue of help before we turn to the Lord, or do we really trust the Lord? David had to examine that in his own life. Ephesians 6, verse 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish or quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. God is a shield to those who trust Him. If we believe Him, that faith will help extinguish all the fiery darts of the enemy. And there's a lot of them. But if we we'll believe Jesus, He's going to help us. Better than a missile defense system, more effective than bulletproof glass, better than an army of armed guards, the Lord is our shield against all attacks of the enemy. Amen? He's telling us that in His Word. And as I said, Isaiah 54, 17, when you're going through a struggle, you ought to have that verse somewhere on your mirror, in your car, on the dashboard. Maybe when everybody's cutting you off in traffic and the road rage starts to rise up, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue which rises against me in judgment, God says he will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Amen? Now, the devil's going to line up his weapons, but not one of them is going to prosper if we trust the Lord. That's really trusting the Lord. Being able to see with our physical eyes, this doesn't look good. God, I don't know how you're going to fix this. And not getting our focus fixed on that, but keeping our eyes on Jesus and saying, no, by faith, I believe, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon form is going to prosper. That's trusting the Lord. Number four, David said, the Lord is our rock, our strength, and our power. Listen to this story. In a seminary missions class, Herbert Jackson told how, as a new missionary, 
he was assigned a car that would not start without a push. After pondering his problem, he devised a plan. He went to the school near his home, got permission to take some children out of class, and had them push his car off. As he made his rounds, he would either park on a hill or leave the engine running. He used this in ingenious procedure for two years. Ill health forced the Jackson family to leave, and a new missionary came to that station. When Jackson proudly began to explain his arrangement for getting the car started, the new man began looking under the hood. Before the explanation was complete, the new missionary interrupted. Why, Dr. Jackson, I believe the only trouble is this loose cable. He gave the cable a twist, stepped into the car, pushed the switch, and to Jackson's astonishment, the engine roared to life. For two years, needless trouble had become routine. The power was there all the time. Only a loose connection kept Jackson from putting that power to work. J.B. Phillips paraphrases Ephesians 1, 19 and 20 in this way. How tremendous is the power available to us who believe in God. And when we make a firm connection, isn't that what's missing most of the time? When we make a firm connection with God, His life and His power flow through us. Amen? Sometimes it's not God's fault, it's just we have a loose connection. We're not positioning ourselves in Bible reading, in prayer, in church, in the ways that God has given us to get close to Him. And we need a, a good connection. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Friends are going to leave you and betray you. Things are going to happen to people you know, and you go, what are they thinking? They know better than this. What is going on? People are going to walk away from the Lord, but Jesus Christ is faithful. We sang about it this morning. He's faithful. Amen? He's faithful. Marriages may fall apart. Friendships may demolish. Those who you thought were loyal to you may not be loyal to you anymore because of crazy priorities in their life. But Jesus is forever faithful. Amen? He's the rock. David found that to be true in all his adversity. And God wants you to find out today, to discover a fresh and a new day that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. That God who saved you, and when you got saved, you felt so clean, you felt so different, you felt so new when you got born again. You remember that feeling? The same Jesus is here to help you today. Amen? And He wants to build on that. So we need to know that. In our weakness, God's strength is made perfect. Aren't you thankful? In our weakness, Jesus' strength is made perfect. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. It's enough. My grace is enough for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities. This is the Apostle Paul talking. I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I can't, but Jesus through me can. Amen? Through Jesus, I can run against a troop. Through Jesus, I can leap over a wall. I can't do it in my own effort, but in my weakness, God's strength is made perfect. David learned that key, and God wants us to learn that this morning as well. Who is the Lord to you today? Who is the Lord to you today? Has Satan bombarded you with so many circumstances and situations that it's caused your faith to weaken? He'll keep trying. He's not going to quit trying until he re receives his final punishment in the, in the latter days. But you need to keep looking to Jesus. Who is the Lord to you today? Refresh your memory. Go back and remember all the times God, God's been so faithful. Amen? He's helped you. Is he a last resort? Is Jesus just a crutch, an impersonal force in the distance? Or like David, have you learned, regardless of opposition and adversity, that you're going to put your faith, you're going to put your trust completely and exclusively in the Lord? Amen. And that's where God wants each one of us to get. That our faith, our trust cannot be shaken because we know God is faithful. Amen. And let's remember these things that David recalled in this song. In this song. Uh, 2 Samuel 22. He is our lamp. He's the one that will strengthen us. He's the one that will help us. And uh, He has a purpose and a plan for our lives. And every stumbling block of the enemy, God wants to turn it into a stepping stone if we'll allow Him to. Amen? Would you stand with me this morning? I want us to close 
in a time of prayer, responding to God. God doesn't speak frivolous words. God's not engaged in mindless chatter. Do you know some people who are? <laughs> you just wish sometimes they would be quiet. God speaks and something happens. Look at creation. Amen? He spoke and worlds came into existence. And that same God is speaking this morning through this message to your life and to my life. And He wants something to happen. He wants a change to take place. And if you're a sinner this morning, you've never given your heart to Jesus, you're dominated by sin. You can't stop it in your own strength. There's one who can this morning, and His name is Jesus. And if you'll have a change of ownership in your heart today, and say, God, I, I've been running the show and calling the shots, and I've made a mess out of my life, but God, I want your forgiveness. I want there to be a change of ownership. I don't want to call the shots anymore. Jesus, I want you to be my Savior. I want you to be my Lord. God will do that. He'll respond to a sincere prayer of faith. And if you've gotten away from God, maybe you became that prodigal son. You used to know the Lord. You were raised in church. But you know right now, if you were to die, you're not certain that you would go to heaven because of the life that you've been living. You need to get your heart right with the Lord. You need to not be playing games. There's no guarantees regarding this life. Our life is a vapor, it says in the book of James, waiting to pass. And we need to make sure our lives are right with the Lord. So if you need to rededicate your heart to Jesus, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with us as well. Jesus said, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. Amen. He's doing that this morning. I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, Jesus says, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. God is just simply asking this morning, will you open the door and will you let Jesus in? He's not going to break the door down and force you. He's only going to come by invitation. And if you want to invite Jesus in, I want you to pray this prayer with us. I think most in this room have already made that decision. And I want to ask you to help uh, repeat after me this prayer. For those who may be watching over Facebook, who need to make this decision. And if you'll pray this prayer with us, I believe the Lord will respond. And you can have a change for the better in your life. Amen. Let's pray this prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father. I come to you in Jesus' name, admitting and acknowledging that I am a sinner. I believe Jesus, that you died on the cross for my sins, paying the penalty that I deserve, and I am in need of you, Jesus, to be my Savior, to be my Lord. Please forgive me for all my sins. Wash me, make me clean, and help me from this day forward to live for you. Thank you for saving me, making me ready for heaven. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you made that decision this morning, give us a call, send us an email. We want to help you in your walk with the Lord. Get a Bible and start reading in the book of John. Let God speak to you through His Word. Every relationship... It's a healthy relationship is two-way, right? God speaks to us through His Word, through our circumstances, through other people. We speak to God in prayer. Set aside a time of prayer. Even if it's just five minutes to start with, you'll see your prayer life grow as you get to know the Lord and you hear Him answer your prayers. And then find a church to get plugged into. If you live in Colorado Springs or the uh, Pikes Peak region, there's no better place for you to be than right here at Finished Work Worship Center among other brothers and sisters in Christ who believe the gospel and who will help you grow in your walk with the Lord. We run better when we run with our brothers and sisters in Christ to the finish line. Amen? I don't know how, how to explain it to you better than to look over and to see another brother or sister running alongside of you in that same race of faith. It's encouraging. And that's what church is for. And so find a church to get plugged into and uh, grow in your walk with the Lord. Believers, I want us to close out with a time of prayer. Uh, and just uh, We're going to sing one more song. And let's just give God our hearts. Amen. Who is the Lord to you? Has the Lord become distant? You're still saved, but you've had some circumstances that the enemy has tried to use as stumbling blocks. But maybe God's trying to encourage your faith today. No, those are going to become stepping stones. Maybe you need to give those difficult times to the Lord. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what the Holy Spirit has put His finger on in your life, but don't quit running the race. Amen. 
Don't quit trusting the Lord, believing in the Lord. When your strength is, is exhausted and depleted, His strength is made perfect. Amen? And through the Lord, you can run through a troop and you can leap over a wall. Let's let Him uh, empower us today before we leave. Let's sing this song together.
overwhelmed this past week by circumstances that are bigger than them. God, let them see that you're sovereign. Let them see that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that they ask or think. And God, that faith that may have been diminished a little bit last week, God, let it increase this morning. God, as they've heard your word, let them see that, God, you see and you know exactly what they're facing. And God, you're able to turn things around. You're able to help them to get past this difficult time and to triumph, to walk in the victory that Jesus purchased for us at Calvary. Lord, help us to believe you for that today. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. God, on our right and on our left, you know what they're facing this morning. Bring breakthroughs, bring answers, bring hope. Let their trust never waver in who Jesus is, what he's done for them at Calvary. Let them run this race to the finish line. No detours, no stumbling or getting out of the race, but running with perseverance the race that is set before them. God, let them run into your arms and hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Help us this week to simply do what you did, Jesus, as our example, the Father's will by the help of the Holy Spirit. Help us to live our Christian lives that way this week. Use us as salt and light here in Colorado Springs. May we have opportunities, divine appointments, to sow a seed of the gospel in our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, people in this community. And Lord, let us see a harvest of souls. Colorado Springs being turned around for the glory of God because you're using us. We thank you for that. Bless us as we leave this place this morning. Help us to put into practice the things that you've shown us in this message today. And we'll be quick to give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for all that's accomplished. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, amen, amen. God bless you.